Hello everybody and welcome back. Oh god, that was a really, really weird little voice crack sort of thing there. Anyways, welcome back to the Mega Modded series. We're jumping in. We're jumping in. Streak is leaving quite a bit to be desired. But anyways, let's randomize that character. See what we've got going on. I do have a new mod. Um, something to mod that seems interesting. I do have a new mod that adds a bit of a rework to Apollyon. It's nothing crazy. Uh, it makes it so that his void has a four-room charge only for him, not for everyone. Uh, and also changes his stats and health a bit to more reflect the fact that he's a stern statue. So he's a bit slower, hits a bit harder. Rubber baby's pretty decent here. Uh, yeah, in general, pretty good. Oh, I was like, what the hell's this item on the right? Then I realized it's the resprited um, Lusty Blood. I forgot that I've uh, I've got a bunch of resprite mods on now. <laughs> Even uh, Robo Baby's different. And I was like, what, what the hell's going on here? Yeah, I forgot that I got all of these resprite mods. I haven't actually played Isaac in a while. And you may be wondering, what is a while to you? One day. <laughs> I didn't play Isaac yesterday. <laughs> that is a while to me. Normally I play like two runs a day on average. And I didn't play any yesterday. It's, it's, it's a bizarre world. Uh, but yes, anyways, today's... Ooh, nice. Today's um, question is... What's your favourite really unknown game? What's your favourite game that n really not many people know about whatsoever? Like, I have a few contenders. One of them is a PS2 game that, while not super, super unknown, I never hear anyone talk about it when they talk about, like, great PS2 classics. It's called Cell Damage Overdrive, and basically, it was like a really cartoony style. I'm gonna lose this heart. It's gone. Oh, oh my god, I saved it. Um, it was this really sort of cartoony style, sort of Looney Tunes-esque um, demolition derby, where it had a few different modes, but it was all about basically getting different up, uh, upgrades and weapons, kind of like you do in Mario Kart, that you could use to, uh, to, to bash and thrash your opponents. And oh my god, it was so fun. And like, because it was so like, like cartoony, by the way, I do highly recommend giving it a Google, um, Cell Damage Overdrive. It's, it's actually um, available on like PlayStation 4 and I believe 5 as well as like a backwards compatible game on like the stores. Um, that's ma mainly where I play it. Uh, ooh, very nice. And oh my god, it's just so good. <laughs> yeah, like one, one of the really great things about it being like super sort of cartoony and, um, and like... It's just, it's just very, it's very animated, as in, like, the characters just have, they just ooze personality. And for a PS2 era game, like, it's, it's definitely got some childish elements. It's got a few characters in there that are just ridiculously stupid. But then it's also got some really, really adult themes in there as well. Um, like, there's one character... Like, obviously, there's, there's loads of different characters, and they all have their own unique personality, their own unique vehicle, their own specialist weapon sort of thing. And one of the characters is called Dominique, and she is literally a dominatrix. She is, a, 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 like, a really tall, blonde woman in, like, basically a gimp suit. <laughs> like, she, she's not really a gimp suit, but she's in, like, full leather with, like, a high heel stilettos on. And she earns it. Like... <laughs> She, she, like, she, like, makes, like, some really, really provocative comments towards the other characters when she, like, um, kills them or whatever. And, well, you don't, you don't really kill the opponents. You destroy their vehicle, and then, like, the, the character that was in it then ends up running around without their vehicle, and then the, the vehicle respawns. Um, you can't control your character while it's outside of a vehicle. It's just, like, when you die, you just see, you just see the, uh, like, NPC, or, or co-op, you can play co-op as well, you see the little, little character just running around aimlessly, um, without their vehicle, it's really funny, actually, but yeah, I gotta say, like, she, there's some really, really crazy themes, and then there's, like, a, there's, like, a demon, um, called, I can't remember what the, the demon's name is now, it's been a little while since I played it, um, damn, what the hell's his name? Cinder, um, the, he's just crazy, <laughs> Like, he's just this character that is pretty much possessed by the devil, but, like, not in an evil way. Ooh, Mini Mush. I'm going to take the other one, there. Uh, flat sounds decent. Uh, not in, like, an evil way, though. He's just kind of crazy. He's just kind of, like, a bit bonkers. Uh, and and he, his car is, like, this sort of, like, basically a metal box with spikes on it. 
Uh, there's Foul Mouth, um, which is a, like a play on Foul the Bird. So he's a duck um, that is basically a gangster. He's like specialist weapon is a Tommy gun and he's got like a sort of gangster's car. And like his voice is like, nah, see? Wise guy. And oh my god, it's just, he's what he's definitely my favorite character, the, uh, the foul mouth. The Tommy gun weapon isn't great, I'll be honest, but um, just his character personality. Then there's uh, BT Bruno, which is uh, like a, a character, I'm not going to go through every character by the way, I'm just going through some of my favorites. But there's uh, the BT Bruno, which is, he's basically just like a uh, um, sort of, he works for himself, runs his own like construction company, and he is just like, he gives no shits. He gives no shits. But one of the really cool things about this um, about this game is it's kind of, do you know how like, oh, <laughs> it's blessed leaf. It's blessed leaf. We got to take it. It's too broken. It's too broken to not take. Um, right, what we got here? Fettered heart and enraged soul. I think both of these are pretty worthwhile, actually. I think we'll just take fettered, soul, uh, fettered heart for now, though. Um, yeah, like, so the, kind of like in the way that Apex Legends is, the, the whole, sh the whole game is under the wraps of a TV show. Like, uh, like how Hunger Games is the films, then I actually just watched Hunger Games, so it's, it's like fresh in the mind. But, um, like how Hunger Games is, what the hell? Um, what the fuck? Excuse me? That's not correct. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's all under the wraps of it being a TV show, and like, it's not just like a, it's not sort of like a Hunger Games-esque TV show, as in like, where everyone's hoping people die. It's like a really fun game show where everyone like, loves taking part and everything, and it's, it's kind of like going to a real demolition derby. Uh, and, but they, they kind of treat it as like a sort of soap opera or like a drama where it's like, next week on Cell Damage, find out what happened to Cinder when he confronted Dominique about this, this and that. But then also in like, in between all of that, there's like little home movies and little sort of, um, movies you can unlock for each character to kind of give you more about their personality. And oh, some of them are so funny. Even to this day, like, I've gone back and, like, thought maybe they were just funny because I was a kid. But no, they are genuinely really funny even now. And you can probably find, like, a YouTube video with all of them. I, I, although I don't know. Like I said, it's not a super well-known game. Or at least I don't think it is. Uh, I don't know if anyone in the comments here will have played it. But, yeah, like, what the hell's left, Urshu? Uh, yeah, there's, there's like these videos, like BT Bruno's is hilarious, like, like I said, he's like a self-starter, runs his own construction company, and just gives no shits. So when he's like, his first video is him like interviewing to be on Cell Damage, and they're like, nah, I get that you have a, that you have like a digger, but no one really cares. There's, there's more, there's cooler people out there, you're just a builder, and he's just like, fuck that, and drives this digger straight through the studio wall, and then it's like, Ex like blows up a bunch of explosives. <laughs> oh, I've got that mod on that tells you the item that you missed out on now. That's so cool. I forgot about that. Uh, I got I got an item where whenever you take one item, it shows you what the other was and what you missed out on. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's just it, it's just great. He just like comes and gives no shits and just runs his um runs his like construction vehicle straight through the wall. And then it's like another one uh another one of his later on that you unlock. Where he's like walking down the street and it's kind of him doing like like a sort of promotional video for him in the games. Like it's it's like his advert. Do you know how like in certain shows they'll have an advert about one specific character to try and get people to like them more? It's kinda of like that and it's his his video like a PSA of like who he is. And he's just walking with this random kid and he just keeps like destroying this this child. <laughs> <laughs> like, he like pats him on the back so hard he flies through a brick wall and he like flattens him with a steamroller and <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's hard to describe how funny it is, but I, I, I really thought it was hilarious. And yeah, just in general, they're all really, really good. Ooh, I forgot about this. This is a really cool uh, fight arena for this. Just be careful because he can pop up directly underneath you. I kind of want to use a bomb against him here if I get the opportunity. I'm probably going to, actually. There you go. I think I got him. Yeah, I did. Good. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's just... It's one of those PS2 era games. It's it's one of those games where 
you know for a fact there'll never be anything like it again. I feel like PS2 was like the golden era of variety. I, I never had an Xbox. I was I was all PS2. But I feel like it was it, it really was like the golden era of variety in gaming. Uh, I'll check out this, but I'm not sure. No, I don't, I don't know where the secret room is actually. Hmm. It could it could definitely be here. I'll try it out. Nah, it's not. Hmm. Okay, I'll leave it. But yes, uh, it's. I think PS2 was just like the golden era of gaming variety. Like, obviously there's indie games that come out now that kind of fill that spot. But I mean, as in like actual physical disc releases or like console releases, it's just all the same shit nowadays. <laughs> like, there is some cool games that come out here and there, but they're all just like... I don't know, they, they, they kind of lack... Even, even ones that are like really, really, really good. Like, I, I'm not, I'm pe personally not a Soulsborne sort of person, but I know Elden Ring came out recently, and that's, like, a fantastic game. But it's still, it's just, you don't, it, like, it's still just, uh, like, a new version of something that already exists. And I'm not saying that Cell Damage was the first ever, um, first ever Demolition Derby game. Of course, there's been plenty of them. But it just, it was so different. It had so much character to it, and it just, it really, it, it, and I feel like a lot of games had that. There was like uh, another game, which I don't think is as unknown um, as Cell Damage, but another PS2 game that I loved called uh, RC Revenge Pro, which was essentially just a, just a clone of Mario Kart at the end of the day. It really was, but it was so good. It was so good. Thank you. I'll crack that. Oh, ho, ho. bit off the PJs, bit off the PJs. Did I forget my knife piece? Oh boy, I'll give myself it, it's cool. It's cool, I don't mind. Toxic Shock, ooh, with the Resprite. Missed out a magical pen there, but Toxic Shock is BV good. Yeah, it's just, there's just so many games from like playing PS2 that I just miss. Like, even, like, one of the games that, this is, this is another thing with PS2. When you're a kid, especially when you're just getting new games, and essentially the box sold you the game. You'd go to Blockbuster or wherever, uh, and you'd be like, oh, hi, the, 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 the box of this game, the box art is just insane. And then you'd, like, read the manual on the way home in the car, and you'd get fucking hyped to shit to play it. And even if it was trash, you didn't really know it as a kid, so you still enjoyed the game. I think there was only ever one game that I got the the the, the box art and like what I'd read about it on the on the back of the box and in the in the manual was so vastly different from what the actual game provided that I was upset. It was called like something to do with it was something to do with tanks. Basically, on the cover it had like these really sort of realistic looking tanks, and even in like the gameplay images, it had these like realistic looking tanks. Uh, and it looked great, and then I got into it, and it was it was just not. It was like little cartoony tanks, and it was not good. But but apart from that, most games you just kind of accept what they were. And like so, like one of the biggest examples of that for me is um, a long time ago now. It was probably during university. Me and my friend were looking up a list of the worst released games of all time. It was like a wiki of like all of the what is regarded as the worst games. And um, I was surprised to find one of my favorite childhood games was on there. And I was like, damn, is it a bad game? And turns out it, it really is, but I, I still thoroughly like remember it fondly and don't consider it a bad game. And guess what it is? <laughs> it is The Simpsons Skateboarding. It was a Tony Hawk clone, but Simpsons skinned. And basically it, 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 got, it got hounded for just being a lazy clone with, with very, very little of the original Tony Hawk's features in it. And basically just a bare bones shitter version, which was pretty fair. It pretty much was. But I remember that game so fondly, so fondly. Because it was it was kind of of the of the era where Simpsons Hit and Run was big. I mean, I'm sure many of you have played Simpsons Hit and Run. And those of you that are too young to have played it, go get yourself a classic console or buy it on PC and play it. Because my God, Simpsons Hit and Run, it's outdated, but it's a classic. It's such a good game. It's it definitely has. Like, it's, it's definitely one of those games where it has that sort of nostalgia filter where everyone thinks it was better than it was and when you replay it, it's not as good. Mainly because the, um, 
they, they rehash missions a lot. The missions are very similar. But otherwise, it's it's a really fun game. And then, like, the story itself is pretty good, too. Especially, obviously, if you're a Simpsons fan. Uh, but that, that's, that's a game that I remember fondly. But it was kind of of that era. Um, Road Rage 2 as well. Uh, not, sorry, not 2. But uh, Simpsons Road Rage also came out. Yeah, apparently we gulped our leaf trinket. When? What? What? Oh, we got marbles. Oh, shit. I, I, I completely forgot. Oh, there's our first Eden's Blessing. To many more. Oh, we missed out the suplex, though. Very sad. That's, that's such a great mod, that. Being able to see and just, like, be upset about what you missed is quite funny. All right, we're trying to go to the shop here. Uh, but, but yeah, um... It was kind of in that era, and like there was like Simpsons Road Rage, which was essentially like Crazy Taxi, but Simpsons. That was pretty good as well. I, I actually had that on a few different consoles. I think I had it on either my Game Boy or DS. I can't remember now. Uh, and obviously had it on the, the, the PlayStation 2 as well. So then, yeah, I, I just kind of got Simpsons Skateboarding because it was a Simpsons game. Like... I, I never really understood why, but I was, like, really, really into Simpsons as a kid. Like, like ridiculously so. I never really remember being that into it, like, in terms of watching it. In fact, I very rarely remember watching it as a kid. But I had, like, all of the Simpsons games. I had, like, Simpsons figurines. I had a Simpsons-themed bedroom. As in, like, my I think it was my sheets were Simpsons. My mum had painted, like, a... A Simpsons mural on the wall of like Bart uh, saying eat my shorts or something like that. Um, there was a few other things as well but I'm gonna say like it's it's one of those sort of like it feels like a fever dream. <laughs> I remember having all of these Simpsons related things but I don't actually remember liking Simpsons. I'm not saying I, I remember disliking it but I don't remember being really into it or like watching it a lot or anything like that so Oh my god, why did I open that? I'm a little bit confused as to why I ended up being so into it. I mean, it might just be that I'm misremembering and I indeed was very into it. Uh, we are on mines too, so we need to go and do our thing. Have we not found any of the buttons yet? Oh, really? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just one of those weird things. Wait, oh, this can't be mines too, right? There's not enough space for the uh, thingy room. I'm confused. Yeah, wait, what? Um. Um. The fuck? <laughs> I'm really genuinely very confused what's going on right now. Right. This is Mines 2, right? It says Mines 2 there. Mines 2 is where it's meant to show up, right? The, the, the key piece puzzle. So where the fucking hell is it? I think some... Some generation thing has, like, balked it and it's just not showing up. Right. If there's a mausoleum door after this boss, then we know for sure, don't we? Really shouldn't have uh, bothered with that. That was a bit of a... Stupid one. I really hate that the, the someone needs to rework this boss. For one, just make it so you can hit it through the stone, but you do less damage. Please. Uh, like, a lot less damage. Like, 8% less, but still. And also, make it stop spawning those little black pooters. Uh, blue cap here, nice. So, the mausoleum... What? Okay. Is this just me being a dumbass? Like... Does the second key piece puzzle only show up if you have the first key piece? I don't know. I don't remember. I swear it does, though. I swear the key piece puzzle still shows up regardless. I'm very confused. I mean, either way. I'm just going to give myself the key, the, the knife even. I'm a bit confused. I, I'm, I'm not going to use it for combat, though. I'm not going to give myself it yet. Auction gavel. Auction gavel would actually be really good if we can manage to get it um, without spending too much money here. There you go. Oh, strawberry milk as well. Hell yes, strawberry milk. And what we got here as well. The Eternal D6. Wait, what? 
That is not the Eternal D6. I've got to, I've got to pay for this just to see what it drops. Confusing. Toxic Shock is going to be crazy now with this amount of damage. But yeah, also Tech 2 is going to be really good too. We are unfortunately going to have to hear me tap shooting all the time. <laughs> Ow. I do need some more health. That is apparent. This run hasn't been super crazy so far. We've got some interesting stuff, but nothing crazy. Sissy. Oh, unfortunately, that is a very, very difficult reroll. I will go like that and see what we get. Root kick. Hell yes. No! Eden's blessing. How dare you? How could you took away my beautiful, my baby, my world, Eden's blessing? How dare you? But Fruitcake's going to be nutty with this. I was saying this isn't a super interesting build, but then immediately get Fruitcake. Fruitcake makes any build interesting, no matter what. It's brilliant. It is the best. Would like to find Secret Room, but I'm not entirely sure where it is. I'm, I'm still a bit confused about how this fettered thing works. Ow. Here comes the sun. Bottom do do it. Gavel. Gimme, gimme. The gavel. Provided. Gavel's so strong. I did. I already uh, notified the uh, the developer that the gavel needs a pretty strong nerf. It needs to just start at much higher than like. It needs to be the lowest a gavel item can ever cost is like thirty cent because it's just so easy to get uh, secret room items with. I'm always really bad at judging where the secret room is in these rooms. Like I keep. It'll line up with the door. There. Really? Not a single black heart for me? Thanks. Right, so let's bounce. Sadly, no um, planetarium. Remember that this floor does not give us the triple HP, what? Uh, the, 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 not triple HP, the, the, th the three free hits that, um, what's it called, gives the, the blue blood item that we just got. Oh god. Damn, that was a, that was a good hit, sir. We, I've got to say, I was just about to say, we are not doing much damage, but then I realized I was holding down fire with strawberry milk. You literally can't do that. <laughs> it doesn't work. Okay, HP's in a bad spot, but remember we get three free hits per floor. Also, I keep forgetting that blue blood or whatever it's called doesn't mean that you can only pick up soul hearts. It maybe should. I'm just eating my lunch. <laughs> Made whatever in this video. It's gonna be a really chill video. I love it. I, I love these ones where I just get on a tangent and just fucking roll with it. It's great. Especially when it's one like this where I can just like reminisce about my favorite childhood games. Zealot Heart. Nice. Also, do you want to know something wacky? Do you know, in I think it was either the last episode or maybe the one before that, I got one of the new Immortal Hearts and it prevented me. Oh, God. That looks glitchy. Um, And it prevented me from uh, justice and justice. If we get the Soul Heart, we'll take it. Otherwise, I don't really care. Right. Um, yeah, do you know how we got one of those Immortal Hearts from that new uh, mod that I was using and they were a bit... Um, glitched. Ooh. Yeah, we'll go with Max. Oh, no. Wait. Okay, wait a minute. Doesn't matter. I was going to say this is terrible with strawberry milk, but it's actually fantastic with strawberry milk. 
Because Strawberry Milk, basically, the longer you're firing, the lower your damage. But it only counts if you're actually holding the arrow key. So if I'm, if I'm moving it, damage scales down. If I stop moving it, damage goes back to full. And it stays at full. So it's really, really easy to use, actually. In fact, it's like, it basically... While Strawberry Milk really doesn't have a downside in general, because you can just tap shoot, which is going to get reworked, by the way. Um, this really makes it so it has no downside whatsoever. Fuck your chicken strips. Oh, God damn it! Stop blowing up my bombs! Right. Keep her going. She needs to find a secret room at some point as well. Yeah, these episodes are just always my favorite. Is it like because it, it's like I always go on tangents and talk about random stuff, but you can never sort of keep it together. What was I, what was I saying again? Oh, planetarium. There you go. Um. Oh yes, the immortal hearts. We had that bug where we couldn't pick up other custom hearts. It's okay. We have auction gavel. Venus. Um. Yeah. It, it was it was like not letting us pick up any custom hearts like the mini Isaac ones and like the savage heart we found and I notified the developers and they were like oh sorry this is like a, a really hard fix it's gonna have to be fixed on the side of the mod creator of the custom heart rather than on our side because uh, it it'd mean that we'd have to rewrite the full like all of the code to make this work and I was like okay that's cool and then they were like actually no sorry the developer said he's cool to just rework the whole thing so because of this one little um, bug that, that was found uh, that I found randomly they they're recoding the whole mod to make it work like that's awesome I mean they are called team compliance so it kind of makes sense actually but. I gotta say, I was really appreciative of that because it's like it's not a it's not a major bug because for one, the uh, the hearts aren't exactly super common, uh, so it's not always going to affect you. And then obviously, not only do you have to have the heart, but then on top of that, you have to then find other custom hearts. So it's it's kind of a a niche scenario that you, that it even like crops up. How does this even work? Oh god, uh, it's kind of a niche scenar scenario that it even crops up that way, but. Yet they still thought, hey, this is a pretty annoying bug that's going to bother people. Let's just recode the mod to make it work. And I was like, oh, damn. That is some dedication right there. Whoa, why have we got, why have we got a Curly Boy now? See, now, this is, this is where the, the cost of Auction Gavel... So, by the way, if you don't know what Auction Gavel does, it spawns an item for a cost in whatever... Uh, using whatever room's pool you're currently in. But the cost scales up, like... And changes and keeps getting more and more expensive the longer you go without purchasing but in almost every scenario you just do that you make sure you have enough money like enough prerequisite money to buy it straight away normally at least 25 cent and then you just run into it so <laughs> it's just basically it's just free items from any pool well i won't say free obviously it costs money but it's a free way of getting items from any pool. It's it's really insane how strong it is. In my opinion, for one, it needs to not be in the shop pool. Because it's, it's currently you can buy it from the shop. I think it's way, way too strong to be in the shop pool. But also on top of that, uh, I really think that they need to make it so that the starting money is at least 30 cents. Maybe even higher. Just because getting a planetarium item for 20 cents is like nothing. <laughs> Also, I think the uh, I think the price scale up should be a bit more dramatic and and, um, and randomized. I need to bomb this again to get this out, don't I? Uh, it should be a bit more dramatic and randomized to prevent um, cheesing. Eden's blessing. Like as as in like it should start at 30 cent then maybe maybe randomly dip down a little bit then dip back up and, and do that like like a, like a, a glitch crown where you've got to actually time it correctly to get the price that you want rather than it being super super easy to just buy it the moment it spawns because it's a cool idea but it, it just doesn't really work right now I think that's our first actual hit this floor. Twenty-four minutes. Be quick. Ethan's blessing. 
Damn it. Quickly check this out. Pushy, Mongo, Eden's Blessing. Game? What the hell just happened? Ah, oh, the rock respawned, you fucker. Oh, I'm small enough to get it anyways. Okay, that's, that's fine. I know we don't have a, a teleport to get out of here, but we've got a strong enough build, I think, to, to like, destroy this, um, this boss rush, so I just thought, why not? I was really hoping. I mean, to be fair, Magician is incredible. I was hoping it'd be a teleport card. But yeah, Magician's really good. <laughs> I think we just place it in the middle and chill, and then, like, move around it. But yeah, if, you, if you'll, you'll see this item, the price is scaling up, but it scales up in a really strange way. It's really easy to just buy it for a super cheap price. It needs to scale up way more rapidly and way more sporadically. It's so easy to just buy it for a cheap cost. There should be some timing involved. Yeah, this shouldn't be too hard at all for us. This is kind of a, a strange boss rush layout, but I like it. I like the fact that there's new boss rush layouts. An often neglected room type. Oh, a mutant spider. Oh, wait a minute. We might actually be able to afford it, you know, if I uh, play my cards right here. Okay, I say play my cards right, and then all of the money just goes all over the place. But you see what I mean? I've been, like, wandering around for ages collecting money, and it's only just got up to 40 cent. <laughs> it's just... It's so easy to get it for cheap. And even then, 40 cent for mutant spiders is way too cheap. <laughs> It should be kind of based on quality, maybe, to what it starts at. Like, Angry Tears, that's going to be crazy with this setup. There's a black heart over there that I desperately want. What the hell? We got a lot of, a lot of stuff there. I'm going to finish this off now, because I'm almost finished with it, but... Wait, look. Mutant Spider's like... We might even be able to still get it. Ah, okay, actually, that was a good amount of money. I was going to say that's a bit of a shame. We didn't get much there, but we actually got a good amount there. It just spawned in a bit slower than I expected. But now we have a ton of money. And then we can just go boom and buy Blood Bombs. Ow. I can't see myself because I'm so heckin' small. Soul Heart there is very necessary for us right now. Bunch of mini Isaacs chilling. I've not had to actually press the fire button this entire time, by the way. So I can stop that now. Grab that. Right, so we'll, we'll pop this. And that gives us Pisces. And then we'll go back out. Unfortunately, we did get Spurred. Unfortunately, though, it did take us out of... Oh, God. Spurred's going to lag the shit out of us. Right, so now... We go, um, hmm, uh, is it spawn or give? Give, knife, give mended knife, wait, wait no, mended knife's an item. Because, will giving myself the two knife pieces actually work here? See, six, two, seven. Okay, 626, 627. Okay, no, that did work. I know it's a bit cheesy, but whatever. Do you know what I need to see if I can fix or sort out? I'll, uh, I'll do it after this uh, room server. I love all the bouncy stars. It's not actually lagging as much as I thought it would. But yeah, just, just pop in this and go in over to bop, 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 wherever the hell it is 
Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? It is set to yes. Okay. Anyways, let's go. Right, we're in a pretty good spot. This 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 run got very interesting very very quickly. It was it was kind of a pretty mundane run with a few cool elements like tech and stuff, and then fruitcake really popped off, and then this other tech item, and we've got five Eden's blessings. So I just this trinket. It's so ridiculously broken, but if you get it early, you have to take it because it's it's broken. I, I like I do I do think it needs fixing. It shouldn't. It, it definitely shouldn't stay like this. Another Eden's blessing. Um, it definitely shouldn't stay like this. Uh, I think the intended way, by the way. I don't I don't think it was ever like this on purpose. I think it was intended to only give you one Eden's blessing max. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, it doesn't have a cap. But while I do think. Um, it should be fixed. It's broken in one of the most fun ways because starting your next run with new items is very strong. Normally, it's going to lead to a win or, or a very good chance of leading to a win. Hey, Savage... Savage Heart? Oh, wait, this is a Curdled Heart. I don't think I can take that right now unless I get myself... Yes. Okay, this will take my three free hits, but I, I don't care because I want to try and use that Curdled Heart. There you go. Kettle Heart gives you one of these bad boys. I'm actually loving how a like cute our character looks right now. <laughs> like, I don't know what items we have to do this, but we've got like the little weird pulsy arm body things from the Spurred Transformation. We've got the Venus's hair mixed with these like fish gills, which I don't know what the fish gills are from. But it combines to look like a, a sort of little helmet. And then you can see a little bit of Samson's hair in there as well. It's really cute looking. Really cute looking. I forgot what I was talking about now. Cute Samson has, uh... Ah, shit. Has... Got me all sorts of confused. I'm taking a lot of random, seemingly unavoidable damage right now. That's to go, fella. Dreamcatcher, we don't have a trinket right now, so why not? Let's just vibe to the uh, to the arcade music for a bit here. Whoever made this, absolute god, so good. <laughs> it's so fitting for the arcade as well. Like actual real real life arcades should should just play that all the time. I really like the fact that see I, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that these stars adopt your tier effects because I think it's a little too strong considering especially when you're playing as Andromeda Spurred is kind of easy to get. But at the same time, this is such a, a beautiful visual effect having them bounce around like this. It's good that they don't get our tech laser rings because that would be a bit too insane. I think. Oh my lord. Some crazy shit happening right now. Rotten heart there, I'll take it. And rotten gut here. Our angry tears are getting all sorts of glitched out right now. Hey sir. You can't touch me while I'm up here, fool. I don't know what tier is constantly hitting me, but I, I'm having a tier effect that keeps exploding directly in my face. Not good. As you can see, my health is in a bad way. Eden's blessing, though. Like, like what the hell hit me then? <laughs> Okay, I might die. <laughs> I didn't think it was possible on this run, but I might genuinely die because, unfortunately, I keep getting hit by invisible... Like, what the hell hit me then? I think... So, if, if, I'm, if I'm correct in thinking, I think what's happening is our stars are adopting our tier effects. And because of that, 
Okay, that's good. Because of that, they are sometimes adopting tier effects from Fruitcake that are explosive. And because they're bouncing directly under our feet at all times, when they bounce, they explode and thus hit me. I'm assuming that's what's going on at least. I can't actually be sure. But essentially, the only way to avoid it is to keep moving. But unfortunately so for us, once we get to the boss fight, that isn't really a valid tactic anymore. Because you kind of need to stay in one spot. We're basically just going to try our best when it gets to the boss. But I feel like we can probably make it to Mother. But making it past Mother might be a, a bit of a stretch. Actually beating her might be a little too difficult. Right, we'll give it a go, but I'm fairly sure we're dead. Because I've got to keep moving to make sure I don't get exploded. But this, this boss really doesn't work when you keep moving. Like, we've got really good damage. The angry tears. They are so glitchy. I think it's when an angry tear is combined with a sticky tear. The, uh, the visual effect for it kind of just bugs out. Okay, she managed to do the worst attack ever as well, which is not conducive to our success. She very rarely does this attack anymore. It's been a while since I've seen it, but whenever she does it, you know you're going to get hit. She just never stops batting it. Just stop. Yeah, look, look, I got hit. Just stop batting it, please. Leave it be, woman. And then it splits. It's just like, it's all sorts of box. Okay, so we're actually doing a lot, lot better than I thought we'd be doing, surprisingly so. It's definitely the stars that are exploding. You can see them exploding there. I'm surprised she went straight into this attack. That's rare. Okay, now we're dead. Oh, God, yep. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Once we got hit on that rotten heart. Yeah, basically, um, I'm not sure which tier effect it is. It could very well be a modded one. But to the creator of the Andromeda character, please see if you can figure out what item that was from Fruitcake there that was affecting the spurred stars. And try and fix that. I will message uh, the developer and see if it can be fixed. It depends because there's there's no real way to know which tier effect it was. I imagine it was like Explosivo or I'm pretty sure Ipecac's already like taken out of there. But maybe maybe through Fruitcake um, the effects can still be accessed. Either way, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one.